Hi, I'm John and in this tutorial I'm going to be taking you through how to use pattern matching in data validation rules in Microsoft InfoPath 2010. Now although I'm using the InfoPath 2010 interface you can use this same tool in the same way in InfoPath 2007 and 2003 as well. The objectives of this tutorial is to take you through how to apply pattern matching to a data validation rule, how to prevent the pattern matching becoming mandatory, which is quite common, but also to make sure that when the users add the value into this text box, the characters become uppercase. For the example, I'm going to be using the good old fashioned British national insurance number. For our American cousins, this is the equivalent of your social security number, and we use this to allow us to pay for state pension and other contributions to the government. The code, or the insurance number, is made up of two letters, typically shown in uppercase, followed by three sets of two digits, and then finally an uppercase single letter. So here I have my staff information form open in design view and here you can see my national insurance text box control. And I'm just going to open up the properties so you can see there's the field name NI and the data tab is a typical text string data tab. Now for those that are using InfoPath 2007 and 2003 you'd see the data validation button at the bottom of this data tab. In 2010, data validation, conditional formatting and good old-fashioned action rules have all been placed in the same place. So I'm going to just close this properties box down and with the control selected I'm going to go to the control tools properties contextual tab here and on the right hand side I'm going to click manage rules. And here's the rules task pane on the right hand side. I'm going to click on this new button and out of the three types of rules as they're now grouped together as in 2010 I'm going to choose data validation rules. I'm just going to give this a name check NI and now below I'm going to click on the condition link. The condition box pops up where I just confirm the correct field is placed in the first box. I'm going to change the operator here in the middle to does not match pattern and don't forget in InfoPath in particular data validation rules are pessimistic logic so we're looking for what makes it fail and not what makes it pass. And on the right hand side I'm going to click on the drop down arrow and choose select pattern and up comes my data entry pattern dialog. As you can see there's a few standard patterns most of which are typically American style social security number zip code. So what I'm going to do is pick custom pattern and that clears the custom text box below and you can see at the bottom there I've got a drop down arrow that provides a list of predefined special characters. So from this list I'm going to choose any letter, so they must type any letter at that first position of the value. I'm going to click the drop down arrow again and choose any letter again. Don't forget national insurance starts with two letters. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click inside the custom box and add a space using the keyboard. It says at the moment invalid pattern. That's because we can't end a pattern match with a space at the end. I'm going to continue, put in any digit and I'm going to do that again and there we go so I've got my two letters space and two digits I could carry on using that drop down box what I'm going to do instead a bit of sneaky lazy stuff I'm going to drag across the space there you go and the two digit special characters and what I'm going to do on the keyboard is do control C to copy that I'm going to click at the end and then do control V twice to paste 
that set of characters in. And then just press the space bar at the end. And I could, again, click on the drop down arrow and select the any letter. I can copy and paste as you've seen. I can also type these in if I prefer. So I'm going to put in the backslash a small lowercase p there and in braces a capital L. And if you look at the beginning that's exactly how the first any letter special character was provided. So that should be fine if I click on OK. I've now created the condition that says if my field does not match the pattern of a national insurance number the screen tip I'm now going to provide just a screen tip on its own I'm going to specify invalid national insurance and that screen tip will hover as I hover over the control that tip will pop up on screen okay time to preview that rule. I'm going to click on the preview button on the home tab. You can also press F5. So there's my form. I'm just going to click into the National Insurance and type in two letters, space, two numbers, two numbers, two numbers, and letter. And that's how we expect users to put the code in. If they do put it in wrong, so a look any old rubbish will do. There we go. You'll see if I click away it goes the red dashed border. If I hover inside the control up comes my tooltip. Now if I do get it right the other issue I've got is it's in lowercase. Also the other issue I've got is it makes it a mandatory field. Can you see the red star on the right hand side telling me that I have got to supply a value? And there could be a situation where I have an employee that's not a British citizen, maybe working abroad for me, and uh, doesn't have a national insurance number. So I want to make this optional. What I need to do is modify the condition I created. And with that condition, I'm going to add an extra condition in there that says if the national insurance is not blank. So if it doesn't match the pattern and is not blank then we will see the error appear. Save and preview my form and there you can see the red star has disappeared so I've now made this field optional. There's one more issue and that is that I would like the numbers and characters to appear as they should in a national insurance number and specifically the letters I would like them to be uppercase. Now I don't want to force the user to hold down the shift key and type in the capital letters. What I'd like to do is have the form capitalize the letters for them. So the last thing I'm going to do is apply a formula into the default value of the text box. So I'm going to bring up the controls properties again. Here you can see the default value. Which I'm going to click on the edit formula button on the right hand side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a function, a text based function called translate and you can see what it says you just read there returns the first text string with each character in the second text string let me explain how that works so if I click on OK I've got three arguments in this function the first one represents what value I want to translate so if I double click on this argument prompt I'll check the national insurance field and click OK. Notice it comes up with a dot. The dot refers to working with the current field the formula is being placed in. Now in the second argument I need to specify which characters I want the function to look for. Now I'm going to put these letters in alphabetical order. 
I'm putting these in lowercase. I've also placed them inside a set of double quotes because this is literal text that I'm putting inside a formula. Now put this in alphabetic order. Some people prefer to put this in QWERTY order, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. It doesn't actually matter which order you put these characters in, these letters, providing the third argument has the letters in exactly the same order but in uppercase. So the way it works is if it finds any reference of the first character, the letter A, it replaces it with a capital A. If it finds a lowercase b, it replaces it with a capital B. Okay, so that function will now translate any lowercase letters to the uppercase letter that's in the same position. So if I just verify the formula, it seems to be working fine. I click on OK on all the boxes and let's see if that works. I'm going to go to my Home tab, click Preview, and now if I type in the National Insurance Number in lowercase letters, NW67 and the letter T. And if I tab away or click away from that field, you can see it puts it into uppercase. So there we go, a good way of putting in a specific type of reference which you can use for cost center codes, employee numbers and references, but also allowing us to apply a translate function to force the reference into, in this case, uppercase. If you do wish to switch the casing round, it is a case of simply taking the formula and swapping the alphabet in the second and the third arguments over. And there you go.